Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Shoppers Stop Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Mamta Sama from Perfect Relations. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Sejal. Good morning and thank you all for joining us on the Shopper Stock Quarter 1 FY25 Earnings Conference Call. Today we have with us the Senior Management represented by Mr. Kavinder Mishra, Customer Care Associate, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Karuna Karan Mohana Sundaram, Customer Care Associate, Chief Financial Officer. We will begin the call with the opening remarks from the management, after which we will have the forum open for the interactive Q&A session. I must remind you that the discussion in today's earnings call may include certain forward-looking statements and must be viewed, therefore, in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. Please restrict your questions to the quarter performance and to strategic questions only. Housekeeping questions can be dealt with separately with the IR team. I would now request Mr. Kavinda Mishra for the opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Mamta. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the conference call of Shopper Stock Limited. This morning, we will cover the results of June quarter for the financial year FI25. On the call with me is Karna Karan, our CFO, our STNA lead, Jay Prakash, and our investor relation lead, Rohit. We will start with prepared remarks wherein we will cover an overview of our performance in detail. I will also cover the performance of our KPIs, our strategic pillars, and in the end, our future broad outlook. We expect this to take around 15 minutes before we open up for the Q&A session. I am sure you would have read the investor presentation which is available in our website, and it has been sent to both the stock exchanges. Let me first start with an overview of the opening context for this quarter. Demand rain remains subdued due to several reasons such as fewer wedding dates, long election season, and a strong heat wave. This was coupled with high levels of cumulative inflation. Needless to say, this influenced our growth and volume recovery remained negative, except in value, fashion, and beauty. Given this context, I would say that our sales growth has been muted. Our EBITDA margins declined due to our new stores, wherein it would take some time to turn into profitability. Let me cover some of the highlights of our performance. Our customer entry largely remained flat during the quarter. Our private brand business has improved full price and through to SS24 range, an effective pricing strategy which resulted in lower discounts. On the same subject, our inventory in private brand is lower by 65 crores against the same period last year. We have taken a conscious call to have right and fresh merchandise for the festive. This will boost our sales during the festive season. I have been speaking to you about our key search areas for Shopper Stop in the last few earnings call, which is our premiumization drive. A lot of what we have already been doing and that has strengthened our business and we will continue to build on it. Given the context of increasing affluence in under-indexed premiumization, we have a huge opportunity to build categories of the future. We are doing this through persuasive communication, partnering with premium and wish to luxury brands, innovating in new demand spaces and formats for the future and, and educating customers at a scale. The results are evident. Our premium plus product portfolio grew by 10% on a like-to-like -like basis and overall growth of 14% for this quarter. Our beauty and in-tune vertical remained a bit positive during this quarter. Our store openings are on track with 11 stores open during the first quarter. As I said before, our strategies are giving us desired results and we just need the external market to be favorable to deliver the margins and the overall recovery. Be that as it may, we are working on it to recover the profits and have respective return on capital employed. I will discuss this at the end. Meanwhile, I will start with the KPI, strategic pillar performances, and discuss the future outlook both short term and long term. Here are the snippets on our KPIs. We delivered Q1 sales of 1,260 crores with 2% growth. 
If I have to analyze month-wise performance in April and May, while our sales declined by 1 and 2 percent respectively, in June we grew by 7 percent. Performance in June was also positively impacted by advancement of ASS by a few days. Women's wear, women's western wear, beauty and intune categories outperformed. During the quarter, our gross margins are largely flat versus FI24. While private brand trading margins were higher by a percentage point, it was offset by the mix. On some of the other KPIs, such as I just spoke about penalization and cash shared recovery. Due to this, our ATV grew by 5% and ASP grew by 3%. This is something which we have been seeing quarter on quarter consistently now. The great news is that our items per transaction also grew by a healthy 2%. And that's a very, very favorable uh, point of view. Our EBITDA was impacted by the slowness, which costs are like, which costs are largely fixed such as rent, staff and energy costs at the store, and other fixed costs. Consequently, our EBITDA declined against last year. During the quarter, we opened two departmental stores and seven intern stores. From operations, I will now move to the performance of our child fillers. First citizen. Our engagement with our loyal customers remains flawless as it's always been. Our loyal members' contribution to sales remained at 80% with marginal increase in repeat purchases. I'm extremely happy to say that our first season member now has crossed an important milestone of 10 million during this quarter. Our premium black card customers contributed 14% of our sales with a 5% growth. There were several events such as AI-based and persona-based personalized videos, personality quizzes, loyalty set schemes, which has driven engagement and resulted in additional revenue. Now let me talk about private brands and Intune. First about the private brands. The slowness which has impacted private brands is particularly on men's and women's wear category. The private brand growth has to be read in the context of first, we had discontinued some of our exclusive brands which are contributing 1.1% of our total revenue as these, these are making lower margins besides not fitting in the redefinition of positioning which we are currently doing. Our improved offerings and competitive prices helped us to achieve higher trading margin. We are launching autumn winter 24 season in August. This ensures 70% full stretch stock and should surely drive revenue and margin support. We are also implementing a new merchandise planning system called Gold Rack from this month end, which will help us to improve the inventory turnover besides obviously uh, improving customer availability. As I said, our operational focus is to improve margins and reduce and optimize the inventory. We have been successfully increasing our trading margins and expect to increase this in the next few quarters. From private brands, I will move to Intune. I'm extremely happy to inform that we opened nine stores in the quarter, taking the total stores to 31. More importantly, even at current scale, the Intune business has achieved all the requisite KPIs. Our customer conversion is at 33% even during this period, wherein our peers were at end of season sale with large offers, which symbolizes the strength of our business. Our IPT remains strong at 3.8 items per bill. Incidentally, we are selling at full price even now. Our sales per square foot are at rupees 11,000, with several stores also opened in high streets. Our full price sell through is circa 80 percent less within a year which indicates the strength of the brand and the product we offer to our consumers. Our margin delivery is higher than expectation. At the store level, our Indian business continues to remain positive and higher than our internal budgets. We have also entered the northern market with two new stores in NCR region. The store expansion is on track. With the success in the last one year, we are planning to escalate our store expansion. Originally, we had planned to open close to around 60 plus stores in the current year, but we'll be increasing that guidance to 75 plus stores this fiscal. During the quarter, subject to regulatory approval, we should open 20 plus stores. Beauty. We are the largest offline beauty departmental store format in India with a history of creating categories and brands across color cosmetics, fragrance and skin care, making us the distant number one in these segments. Fragrance continues to outperform with 19% growth over last year. During the quarter, we also added Tom Ford and Kate Spade in our fragrance portfolio. In our journey of sustaining number one premium beauty company in departmental stores, we opened state-of-art large beauty store in Quest Mall, transforming our beauty business. 
Our beauty business has been and continues to build through experiences. On the tactical initiatives akin to previous quarter, our customer engagement and education reached through 239,000 makeover continues. We also launched four SIS for Mac stores during the quarter. Our 100% subsidiary global SS beauty business delivered rupees 39 crore sales with a growth of 2.5x. On our beauty distribution, we expanded 27 brands, brands with eight fragrance brands. We had a mega launch on Giorgio and Mani near Gateway of India, Mumbai this month. Our distribution network increased to 444 points of sale. This business continues to be a bit positive and encourages us to expand further. We are planning to add three Marxist brands during quarter two. With the upcoming launches and festive season, we should be able to achieve rupees 200 plus crores of sales during this fiscal. Omni channel. Our omni channel sales largely remain flat. We have been delivering omni channel brand experience with messaging campaigns across 12 plus channels, including push, email, in app, SMS, WhatsApp, and others. We have created our content personalization with fine tuned message content and delivery time for individual users based on their behavior. We have improved campaign performance with our best in class tools for incredible engagement. We are also elevating our consumer experience to an updated version of our SS.com mobile app by end of quarter two. Home stock. We are in the process of revamping a few standalone stores, including our largest store in Malad. Our shop and shop stores registered a healthy double digit like for like growth with significantly higher than budget. We also had a strong SPSM growth of 65% in our home store business. Our way forward would be to focus on private brands and aim to increase the contribution from 27 to 30%. Now let me talk about the departmental stores and national brands. I'll be discussing about premiumization in our departmental stores. We will be launching the autumn winter session season ahead of time with a target of around 60% freshness by July end. Specifically on the premiumization, we have launched through religion and also planning to expand Beverly Hill, Polo Club, Doctors and, and other premium brands. In women's category, there is a slew of brand launches which are planned, which includes Tommy Figure, Calvin Klein, Matt Google, RK, Son, Vitu Kumar, and India Lux. On the watches category, we are launching Eigner and in sunglasses, Gucci, Prada, Mobla. Our new brand launch would be Raymond Loungewear, Iconic, L Woman, RSVP, Autumn Lane, Juniper, Ernie Off. Needless to say, there are these are very fantastic brands and they will be working with us very, very closely. We did a pilot of sunglasses Lux concept in five stores, and we are adding five more stores with engaging users. This is something which is we are really banking upon to drive privatization in our stores. We recently opened Starbucks in our Kanku store, and we are witnessing a significant amount of business contribution from these customers. Based on this experience, we are adding more coffee shops in many standalone stores in the next one year. In our quest to elevate our customer experience, we have recently increased our personal shoppers from 300 to 400 and will increase it further. Our personal shoppers enhance our customer experience and thereby increase the ATB, which is normally three times of our, of our normal customer pay associates. On the investment, we have been renovating our flagship store at Malad with the help of a node designed global design firm and investments of nearly 20 crores. Our new Malad store will be lean with lesser space but far better created brands and a delightful consumer experience. We should be able to open the Malad show before Diwali. Now let me talk about CAPEX, working capital and cash flow. We have been discussing about the capital allocation in the last four quarters. Akin to previous quarters, I reiterated that our capital allocation would be higher, wherein we have higher OC and shorter payback period. We had earlier said that we would open 15 department <coughs> stores due to issues in certain markets and regulatory delays and financial issues, issues of local builders at tier two cities, we expect delays in some of the departmental stores. At this point, I would say this may impact three to four stores and we should be able to open 11 departmental stores this year. However, in June, we have a complete visibility and we should be able to open 75 stores during the quarter. We expect to open uh, during the year. We expect to open 20 the stores during the quarter. Overall, we expect to spend rupees 225 to 250 crores in capex, including shifting to a new warehouse in Vivendi. On the working capital with increased focus on reducing our private brand inventory, 
our overall working capital has reduced by rupees 20 crores. Now let me end this meeting with some bit on the outlook. We have strong strategies in place and I am seeing green shoots of marginal recovery in this quarter and more importantly during the festive season. We are reasonably optimistic about our value segment in tune, beauty vertical and I recently started beauty distribution. Our expansion plans remain intact. I have already discussed about accelerating our Indian store expansion. Due to regulatory and other issues, we may have to defer a few store opening for departmental stores this fiscal. We are exploring further collaborations and tie-ups with beauty and apparel brands, particularly premium brands, and they will continue in FI25. We strongly believe that the festive season should have decent growth aided by monsoon and strong GDP growth. On the cost and capital spent, the outlook is as follows. First, rationalized costs in line with the business, particularly in unproductive stores and a few verticals. Optimized inventory at a private level. We have already reduced rupees 65 crores versus last year, and we continue to keep on optimizing this further in line with the business. We are also committed to give the right consumer experience to our customers, which means that we continue to churn brands and our stores to improve the gym rock. While Q2 would be better than Q1, I am confident our H2 with large festive season and increased weddings, approximately 50 days versus 14 in H1, should give us higher productivity and take us back to where we belong to. With this optimism, we expect near-term demand to recover gradually. We remain very confident of mid to long-term opportunity in Indian retail. India's booming economy, expanding affluent population, accelerating digital transformation, coupled with under-indexed premium spend with per premiumization and many more would be the recipe for the stronger runway of growth. With our distinctive capabilities and our strategic trust of transform to our form of sorry, with our distinctive capabilities and our strategic trust of transform to our perform, we are confident of delivering higher growth and margin. With this, I conclude my remarks and we will take a Q&A from the participants. I am also pleased to share that I have with me Biju Kassim, who is the CEO of our beauty business, and Devang, who is head of business for Intune, to answer any queries, specific queries on the business, on these two businesses as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Participants are requested to limit their questions to one per participant. Time permitting, you may return to the queue for your follow-up question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Agrawal from Ikigai Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Good morning. I just had two uh, questions. Firstly, you know, we all hope for recovery into consumer demand. A lot of hiccups which have happened over the last four or five years, I think, now for retail industry. Uh, as we look with optimism, I just wanted to understand, given what you have mentioned on the square footage addition, and the SSG recovery would next two years look like 15% plus on consult top line. That's one question. And secondly, on the cap on the cash flow. So as I understand, I think uh, your store expansion plan looks pretty uh, pretty strong. And as you mentioned, it will spend about two cro 200 to 225 crores on capex, uh, you know, all inclusive, including the warehouse. I uh, just wanted to understand the funding for this uh, in terms of will this be 100% internal funding or are you seeing some cash flow mismatches right now? Uh, and if you could elaborate more on fiscal 25 and 26 both, it will be really helpful. Thank you so much. Hey, hey thanks a lot. Uh, uh, let me answer the second question. <clears throat> yeah, we do uh, with the softness what we have seen in Q1, uh, we may have to borrow uh, probably 100 crores uh, during the year. We don't expect to borrow anything more than that. And for next two years, 
I mean, the capex more or less is remaining at the same level, and uh, we do expect the business to improve. I don't think we will be borrowing. So this hundred crores would be probably uh, a one-time borrowing uh, in this uh, system. And on the first uh, uh, question, uh, so I think the next so if you're, if you're looking at the way we're expanding and the kind of investments we are making in this business, over the next two years, I think overall business, when you look at shopper stock, including the Intune business, the beauty business, the beauty distribution, and the box itself, I think we should be in a double-digit growth over the next two years. That's, that's the number we are looking at. The square footage, Kavindra itself is like almost like upwards of 15 15%, right? So the growth should really be higher. Obviously, we'll come over 12 months, so you can take an average number. But I would imagine, given the strength of store opening itself, that number should be 15% plus. Is that a wrong understanding? Uh, I don't think it would be such a high number because uh, one MQ would be. 5,000 to 5,500 square feet and the large departmental stores we are now opening between 25 to 30,000 square feet. On the back of the cal envelope calculation it comes anywhere between 8 to 9 percentage not more than that the space addition. Secondly it doesn't happen uniform or it doesn't happen on the first day of the year it happens throughout the year and what we have seen is most of the store openings happen during the first fourth quarter. <clears throat> and uh, uh, internally, we are also evaluating uh, to rationalize the store size uh, and a few more things. So, yeah, probably uh, we don't expect such a large increase because of the additional space, uh, Rahul. Got it. That, that answers my question. I'll come back and thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, Rahul. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Kedia from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, so my first question is on Intune. Uh, what is giving us confidence on the ground that we are, you know, accelerating our store opening from 60 to 75 to 80 in Intune? Can you share, uh, you know, now it's been one year for the product launch. How are the first six, eight stores response being? Because at the blended level, if we are seeing 11,000, uh, two quarters back, we were speaking of 14, 15,000 SPF. Last quarter, it was 12,000. This quarter, it's 11,000. So that number is on a declining trajectory. Uh, but the initial 8, 10 stores, how was the margins? And, you know, between metros, non-metros, malls, and high street, how is that response coming? And how is the customer acceptance of the product? Because it's becoming hyper-competition in value retail now. Uh, Thank you, Ankit. Uh, uh, good morning. To answer your question, right, I mean, first of all, uh, with the kind of expansion that we have, the blended numbers will not give you the full story. Uh, the six stores which have seen the third quarter now, their SPF in Q1 of FI21 was upwards of 14,000. So we are holding on to the uh, SPF in the buckets uh, from the last three quarters to now. That's the first question that uh, I would like to answer. <clears throat> Second question is uh, what uh, Kavi mentioned in his opening address. Uh, about 40% of our stores right now are high street stores with us, which are within the first three months of their operation. So uh, there is a decision period of walk-ins growing in a new brand high street stores. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, the last point in terms of customer expect acceptance uh, in terms of our product, uh, I think we have a very, very uh, high delivery of that KPI. I think uh, Kavi mentioned, uh, no, uh, in the presentation it was mentioned that we had 75% plus full price sell through. I'm happy to share that from the day that presentation was made to now, our full price sell through is north of 80%. In fact, it's reached the point where I don't have enough stocks on discount. So I think uh, the product acceptance in this hyper competitive environment is very, very strong. Also, what I've seen is now that uh, a lot of my stores are in the third quarter of existence, you know, we've started tracking repeat customer behavior and I'm seeing a very, very healthy repeat to a point where one out of every five customers is shopping more than once within a quarter. So I think when you just club the product performance and the customer metrics, the customer acceptance seems to be increasing quarter on quarter. And when you see the older stores performance, the high SPF delivery seems to continue. So I think I wouldn't treat too much into the 14, 12, and 11. I think we will, uh, uh, as the stores age, we will come back to the same levels at a blended level also. 
Uh, and uh, Devan, how are the margins um, for these old age stores? Are you seeing at the store level? Uh, are they near double digit margins, these stores? We are referring to Epitra margins, I'm guessing. Yes. Yes, yes, they are, they are. Yeah, yeah close to yeah. that, uh, close to that, okay. So, Kavi, uh, my second question is, you know, regarding your Omni uh, strategy. You know, three years back, we had spent, you know, more than 100 crores on the Omni channel, and that was one of our strong pillars of growth. Uh, last year, we didn't speak of Omni and the customer experience as a customer. Um, it's not great versus competition. Now, again, next quarter, we are going to spend money on relaunching our app and website. And SS Beauty Online was just launched last year, right? So what is the CapEx plan for Omni and how much is coming in OPEX? And um, do you think there's a right to win for Shopperstop in, uh, you know, having Omni presence marketplace, what we have of all the brands together? And is there a cutout of, you know, some OPEX part uh, for this part of the business? No, so I think, uh, Ankit, great question. The, see, our career intention is to be a premium Omni channel player. Hmm? And uh, as you as you rightly mentioned, we had some gaps in the consumer experience, and so that that's the reason why over the last 12 months or so we have been working on the new app uh, version for uh, SS.com. The new SSB is built on the same platform, and uh, SS.com is coming on the same platform as on 30th September. If anything, it will make it will ensure that two things will happen. One well, from the consumers end, the experiences will actually be far, far better in terms of search, searching the merchandise queries. I think it will be at the top end, number one. Number two, what it will, how it will also help us is that because once both SSB and SS.com are on the same platform, the cost actually will start shrinking on this piece from next year onwards. So I think we are in a situation right now that the two platforms are on a different basis. We will be merging the platform from September end, September end and we will start seeing the benefits going forward. So I think it's it's a win-win because it takes care of the cost, it rationalizes the cost, but more importantly, the customer experience becomes better. In fact, uh, with SS.com, uh, the new version which we are seeing, we will be also able to target things like same-day delivery, some things which will be very, very powerful for us as we drive the omnichannel experience. Um, sure. Thank you so much, Kavi. I'll come back in the queue for more questions. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Ankit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Gupta from India Infoline. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for taking my question. So, firstly, I see their expenses see a sharp jump this quarter. It's up 21%. Now, I understand that uh, you're opening new stores, but usually this line has been, you've exhibited quite a strong cost control here. So, just wanted your thoughts. Is this front ending of some costs or is it going to stay at this level and in that context how do we see the EBITDA margin for this year panning out so first quarter is around one percent you usually guide towards a mid single digit around five percent is that doable given this performance your thoughts on that sir hey, thanks for the question uh, Samir. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure that when you say that the cost increase if you we have also attached the non gap income statement uh, the overall cost increase is 10 percentage, out of which the like for like so is between 2 to 3 percentage. The cost increase have happened primarily because of new stores and new businesses, what we have established during the quarter, not, which is not comparable to the last quarter. If you want, we can take it offline and then we can discuss about the cost. But all I can assure you, it's not more than 10 percent, this is last year. That's one. Second on the EBITDA margins, normally we don't give a guidance. Yeah, but uh, with what has happened in quarter one, we expect a mid single digit for the full year. Uh, Rahul. And uh, and Samir, uh, I think one of the big things, and uh, Ankit kind of referred it in his previous query, we continue to invest on tech. We continue to invest in, on ensuring, in fact, we have also taken a big bet on how to strengthen our security systems and all. So I think you will see some investments there, but I don't, while they might be recorded as expenses, they are investments to ensure that the business re remains strong and profitable. So I think that's the journey we are in right now. We will definitely see some improvement uh, in tech costs next year over the, this year's base. Once we uh, rationalize the platforms on which we have our only 
uh, play working on right now. Uh, got it, sir. The, I'll take it offline. Probably the cost question. Uh, sure. Second was a more uh, general kind of a question. So department stores specifically, if any broad trend that you can share now, uh, uh, is it is it some particular brands, uh, third party or your own, which are facing an issue? Is it mall versus high street? Uh, in general, we are seeing uh, you know most of the brands opening EBOs in malls. Is is there is there you know consumers are moving in that direction? So any broad trend that you can uh, uh, share here as to you know the the future of department stores. So well, I think uh, great question again, Samir, and it actually this question this discussion and debate can take actually hours and hours. But I think fundamentally two three things I wanted to share. We we have got very strong partnership with our brands, and we see a lot of consumption of the brands by the by their consumers. That's one. We have we clearly mentioned that one of the big trends globally, and I think in India also that's very relevant going forward is that premium and premiumization is a very very important thing. Even in a very tough quarter when we shared our revenue growth. Our premium plus portfolio actually grew by 10 percent like for like. So what we are saying is that. We need to sharpen our product offering. We continuously engage with our partner brands to ensure that what we see in shoppers is not what we see everywhere. There will also be a lot of consumers who prefer to shop in um, EBOs, but there are far far more who want to engage with uh, with uh, a department store because they come to us for the convenience and for the house of brands uh, possibility. That's one. Second, from the brand perspective, for a lot of brands. Uh, the profitability in this channel is higher than uh, uh, you know their own EBOs. So I think there are a couple of angles. There's a customer angle where we need to continuously upgrade and ensure that the kind of merchandise which we offer is differentiated. Number one, but there's also a business angle where the partners, our partner brands, also feel that the kind of walk-ins which we are able to draw to our stores uh, and the kind of uh, experience which we are able to give to things like use of technology or through use of personal shoppers. I think it's, it's it's a very very strong thing which we had. I think we had a soft quarter generally, and and and, and I speak to people across the board. Uh, uh, so so it, it so it, so if you look at the numbers across the board for the brand, whether it is for their own EBOs or for I I don't want to talk about that a lot, but fundamentally I think we have done uh, fairly well vis-a-vis -vis brand brand channels across the board. Uh, just a follow up here. Can you share the like for like number, the overall for the department stores? I think I might have missed it. For us, it is uh, for the first quarter, uh, it is minus six. Uh, April and May were fairly negative. I think June we saw a recovery and we became positive. You got it, sir. That's all from me. I'll come back in the queue for any follow ups. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Jogani from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so my first question is with regards to the store opening guidance that you have given, uh, that you have said, you know, that there might be only 11 departmental stores that we might open. Uh, so two parts to this. One, uh, is it a net number or is it a gross number? Because you also alluded to some closure of some unviable stores. And the spillover that you're talking about for the next year, the, the three post spillover. So would that mean in the next year, can we open 20 departmental schools in that case? Okay, so uh, Gaurav, thanks for the question. Uh, first part is the number which you said 11 is a is a gross number. It's not a net number. Uh, as, a, as a good business practice, and I think in these times when the customer journey and the customer demand is always something we have, we have been all been seeing how things have been in the past years we have to be very very conscious of the stores and what we have so we are looking at close to five to six stores to rationalize and that's the present sense i have got the number which i spoke to you about are the gross numbers the 11 stores opening uh, so sir, and the, the the spillover number you know because you mentioned that there, there might be some spillover to the next year so that 3-4 uh, spillover uh, and then 15 number for the next year, is that impact or that will also kind of get uh, changed going ahead? I think broadly that number will be there, but again that will be a gross number. Uh... Okay, oh, okay, yeah. got it. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, and then my next question is with regards to again the cost line item. I mean, you know, I do re- uh, realize that you know on a YOY basis there has to be some uh, inflation that cost increases, uh, and given the store openings that you are having. Uh, but even if we look at on a quarter on quarter basis, uh, there is a sharp jump in the other expenses line item. Uh, so the question really is one: uh, uh, the cost that we have seen during the quarter uh, are they sustainable at the same levels? Uh, or uh, there might be some rationalization in this because of the efforts that you have talked about, like closing of the unviable stores and other strategies. Uh, yes, uh, there will be some rationalization. We are working on right now. Probably when we come and speak to you next quarter, we should be able to give a lot more details. Uh, what are the costs and how we are going to rationalize? Uh, <laughs> But, but Karuna, I mean, uh, the number, you know, at least the reported number of the, the stock exchanges that you give, uh, that is around, you know, 177 odd crores for the quarter that we see. So, is it fair to uh, expect, you know, uh, the numbers to be in line with this, or there might be some, uh, you can expect some moderation in that? There will be some moderation on this, though. We are working on the price, there will be definitely some moderation. Uh, okay, thank you for this. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Shah from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. So two questions. The first is I wanted to get a better sense on the beta margins. So right now, if I see there are a lot of initiatives happening in terms of beauty, in tunes, renovations, store closures, etc. So if you can already indicate on standalone departmental level what sort of uh, EBITDA margins would be making, that is one. And secondly, if uh, from a from an outlook perspective, uh, is it fair to say that the broadly store closures, the renovations, and a lot of uh, major expansions should be completed in FY25, uh, and then when we enter FY26, we should uh, see much better traction in terms of profitability. That's my first question. Uh, thanks for the question. Yes, uh, so I think as we mentioned, we are looking at a mid single digit uh, EBITDA for the year. Uh, there are a lot of initiatives which we are looking at in terms of rationalization wherever required and the steps to take. So we spoke about, in certain cases, store closures. We have also seen in the past that whenever we rationalize the spaces for a larger stores and made them sharper and fitter, they tend to throw out a better beta. So that particular piece is also happening as we speak. We believe that this, and, and obviously we are looking at all cost, cost items. It's, it's, it's good always to have a tight control on cost. We believe that the margin should improve uh, in the in, in FI26. Also, we see that the play of private brands, whatever we wanted to do in terms of putting the position strategy in place, putting the structure in place. I think that we are at the end of that cycle now. That should start throwing in better margins from Q3 onwards. All right, understood. So just to be uh, clear, so when we say mid-single uh, degree EBITDA margin, so is it fair to say the standalone departmental stores will be much higher since a lot of this the initiative would be very low in terms of uh, uh, profitability? And for this quarter, per se, if you can give some indication how those margins would look like? Uh, see, uh, uh, you are spot on. The departmental stores ideally will have a higher margin because Intin is a new business. Uh, we have opened a number of new stores. So expecting those stores to remain uh, to uh, achieve the same level of margin would be difficult. At this point, uh, there are common costs and uh, I, we don't want to dwell into details, like what would be the departmental margin and what would be the interim margin. But yeah, to answer your question, the department margin would be higher than uh, other positions. Okay, got it. And my last question is on the beauty side. So if I see the other tailor, probably the leader the industry, they have been able to report a consistent growth quarter on quarter of 20% plus. And we we'll look at uh, us, I mean, Include, even including the distribution, we have been, you know, in single digits uh, probably. So just wanted to get your thoughts, uh, basically what is happening here and in the future, how do you intend to grow this business and what are the steps you're taking? Uh, 
to drive the school. We lost you. Sorry, sorry, sir. We lost you in the first half a minute. Can you please repeat? Yeah, I just question? repeat. I just repeat my question. The question is on the beauty segment. So if we see the market leader here, they have been growing consistently, twenty uh, percent plus. a uh, quarter and quarter and when you look at our performance for last few quarters including the distribution as well it's been single digit so what i want to understand basically one what is the reason for this and second basically what steps uh, are we taking to improve the growth profile and what is our outlook on this did you you would like to take the question yeah yeah sure sure yeah uh, thank you for the question so from the point of view of what we do and what we have been doing well we have been operating fairly well on the premium space so the growth if i look at it across segments you have the premium and then you have the mastige and the mass uh, i would reckon that mass and mastige is obviously growing much faster because that's a lot of recruitment category so in our case while we also have a mastige representation our uh, current uh, mix is largely on the prestige space and prestige is is probably growing at a lesser rate than the mass and the mass and hence is reflective of what our growth was uh second part of the question in terms of way forward uh we have actually set up a beautiful and amazing stores with the most compelling brand mix and in the philosophy of what we think is working well for shoppers the, the premiumization journey uh, we would really have the education expression and engagement part that will hopefully bring in uh, better uh, better growth uh, prospects in the in the in the in the year and going forward so we are actually building up a strong base to be able to really give the best of the expression and engagement and experience to the customers largely on the prestige part of it which is what we are heavily focused at this point Okay, so I understood, but uh, can some guidance in terms of growth, basically, how do we get it? Say from a two-year perspective, not uh, just three years or something. So, so to complement this, and uh, we have put it out in the public domain, we are currently working on Marti brand, which is actually where volumes come in, and this quarter and beyond, we will have Marti brands that will largely accelerate the existing pace of growth. to have a blended uh, growth uh, of uh, uh, which will actually be at par uh, or, or or around the the competition in the next uh, few quarters so so chintan so oh. uh, and just to add on what uh, bidu has said i think for beauty we are looking at a 12 to 15% uh, growth uh, as a base for this year so that oh. is the number or that's the guidance we are looking at Okay, sure. That's helpful. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you so much for answering the question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shalini Gupta from East India Securities. Please go ahead. Okay. So thank you for giving me the uh, the opportunity. So I wanted to check. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Can you? Hello. Yes. Sir. Yeah, Shalini, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. So I wanted to check: <clears throat> was the discounting in the quarter higher higher than what it was in the previous quarter, that is fourth quarter, because uh, because your uh, gross margins have come off. Q O Q. Okay, Shalini, uh, uh, we have explained in the past. the gap gross margin is a function of two things one what is our reservoir sales because if the reservoir sales are higher the contribution is added to the margin and to that extent the margin is always higher and precisely for this reason we always request uh, all the investors and analysts to see the non gap margin which is the true reflection of our margins so if you see the non gap margin it's more or less flat this is the uh, q4 so I don't think there is any reduction in margins with the Q4. Okay, and uh, sir, uh, a lot of people have asked questions on the other expenses. So I just wanted to check the other expenses are mainly rent. Is that right? Ah uh, no, I mean there are multiple heads in the uh, 
uh, expenses shall be uh, like one is rent. Of course, we have uh, uh, electricity cost, we have marketing cost, we have admin operating cost, and we have uh, the service office cost, which is also there uh, where uh, all of us are working. There. So uh, there are five or six line items. Uh, the highest cost, what we have business is on the uh, rental cost, which is around about the inflation is around about 14 percentage. Now we spoke about uh, the investments in tech, uh, particularly in cyber security, and we are also moving from on premises to cloud. So whenever we move from on premises to cloud, the tech expenses is bound to increase because we don't invest anything on the capex. So these are the two large reasons for the increase of expenses by 10 percentage. Okay, and those were my questions. Because I have sorry, sorry, one last question. In the in the presentation or in in the write-up press release, you mentioned that growth has disappointed. One of the reasons you've said is because of elections. Now I just wanted to understand why would elections impact a B two C business like yours? Uh. Charlie, uh, thank you for that question. Let me take this. Uh, I mean, fundamentally, when the elections happen, obviously, and if you would have seen, lots of elections happen on uh, uh, the dates were over the weekend. So that obviously, that that day, that particular market will get shut. Store opening, so for example, uh, a lot of cases opens only in the evening. And if you are doing your Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I mean, we did that math, and that's how May was worse than April. Uh, elections also, what they do is, if there is a if there is a particular rally or, or something in the vicinity of the store, the store uh, operation gets tends to get affected. In fact, it's a good point because see, when we looked at the last two elections and we were looking at analyzing the data during the election time, the quarters, the numbers actually were slightly positive. So we were quite hopeful with, with the few of things which we are doing. We should have seen a bump up. This has come as a surprise to us as well, but when we went deep dive into it, I think a longer uh, election period, a lot of the electioneering dates happening over the weekend, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a lot of dates happening, the stores being forcibly shut for whatever reason, obviously for the, for the, for, for the right reason. I think all this, this all disrupts store operation. Okay, sir, thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Gandhi from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's on the EBITDA margin guidance of big single digits. So I'm just trying to reconcile this. How do we achieve this? Because uh, let me try to paint a picture. Due uh, to distribution is a low margin, relatively low margin business. Uh, 20, I think for 25 is going to be a relatively low margin business compared to the core. And the core itself is actually uh, likely to, you know, just about recover in the second half. So how how do we get to make single digits? So the core itself is effectively by and large a cost plus model, right? So, I so that's question number one. Thanks for your question, Jay. Uh, two things, one, uh, and I think I will let me talk about the revenue part more because I think that's important. All all margin improvements, primarily in a business like ours, should come through, and and for the business as a whole, should come through the demand, uh, you know, rebound in the demand. So I think that's something which we are banking on very strongly. We are looking at a very strong festive campaign. Uh, we we have talked about last year about weddings, and I think that's something which will go after in a very very big way. I mentioned somewhere that there are around 50 odd dates of weddings this year in, in second half, and we believe that we've got a right to win with the kind of merchandise uh, we want to be the wedding destination. So I think that's something which we are looking at and driving. So that's one. Uh, we see a strong demand recovery in, uh, in, in H2. That's one point. Second, obviously, there are certain steps which we have to take from the first side to ensure that we are fit and you know fine and, 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 and we are already sharp in terms of how we are executing. So I think uh, these two, one, one in terms of growth, in terms of using the festive and the marriage season to drive revenue, I think that's one part of it. And obviously, uh, we can take it offline and, and have a larger discussion around it. And second, we have to work on the cost part of it. We are fairly confident about the mid uh, single digit uh, numbers which you are mentioning right now. 
Yeah. Also, the second one, second question I had was on the working capital needs for Intune. Uh, now, I'm presuming it's a faster moving format, right? Because it's affordable category. So now, if I was looking at you know the Q1 inventory days, it has actually worsened to about 140, 143 days as a percentage of gap sales, right? Or you know, in terms of days. Now, I'm presuming that you know. Intune would have contributed meaningfully higher versus what it was in the base quarter. Even beauty distribution would have probably contributed higher versus the base quarter. So we should have ideally seen a decline in working capital inventory days, right? Uh, Jay, uh, uh, if you have referred to over a non gap balance sheet, we always give inventory which is outright purchase and it's our inventory. And if you have further uh, segregate that, on our private brand, which Kavi spoke about, there is a reduction of 56 crores with this last year. The only place where the inventory has increased marginally is on beauty, where we purchased during the last week of June for around about 25 to 30 crores, and which will we'll, we'll get liquidated in this quarter. So overall, yeah, I, we, we, we got your point. That with the expansion of Intune, there will be a marginal increase in working capital. But at the same time, in our larger private brand business, we are... Uh, um, uh, working on to reduce the inventory and uh, so that will net net the inventory should reduce and the working capital reduction should be more or less in the same levels what what we have seen in the first quarter uh, that's for sure uh, and the last question again was you know uh, uh, on intunes expansion plans when you're looking at uh, right uh, so uh, again, this format necessitates a cluster-based expansion, right? And to really, so uh, are we well equipped to do NCR whilst we are doing AT Telangana or, or the other other geographies? Are we necessarily equipped from a supply chain perspective? Uh, Thank you, Jay, for the question. Uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, we are also following a cluster-based expansion process. I think uh, as this financial year progresses, and if you check the uh, presence of Intune stores, you will find a presence of strong clusters, be it in north, east, or uh, north, west, or south. Uh, to your question on whether we are uh, equipped to handle national logistics, we are. Uh, we are very heavily leveraging on the uh, roots of ShopStop as a company, you know, where be it supply chain, be it a vendor base, be it uh, any kind of a logistical support uh, uh, stemming from having an operational stop to shop stop in the vicinity. It all of it helps. So I think Intune is benefiting greatly from that. And I think from that point of view, no part of the country is out of reach from a logistical standpoint. I'm done, sorry. Thank you. The last question is from the line of Ankit Kedia from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for an opportunity again. Uh, Kavi, if I see the black card customer base, or uh, the contribution has increased to 14% of revenue. Now, ideally, a customer is paying 5,000 rupees for the black card, and on 75,000 of shopping, pretty much he's in the money. Uh, do you think uh, with this increasing traction, uh, margins will compress for us on the black card customer as this base is increasing? So I, uh, Ankit, I don't think that is the case. In fact, the black card customer actually, and, and we do the, we, we have this persona where we do the clustering and the profitability of each of the personas which we have, right? So a black card customer, when he comes to the store, his average spend is around 55 to 70,000 against a normal 5,500 for every visit. So I think we this this base is very this base is a very strong and profitable base for us, Ankit. I I, I didn't understand from where where do you, where where did you pick this point that uh, the black card association is a is, is a value of association. In fact. The repeats are higher, and the cost of acquiring this black card customer because we also have a high uh, repeat rate of the uh, of the customer in terms of renewal. I think it's a key to our business strategy to drive uh, repeats and uh, uh, loyalty with the customer base. So that's on the top line, uh, Kavi. But if I look at the EBITDA, uh, you actually given him five percent points back, right? Uh, and that's where the margins could be lower for him, while obviously it's driving top line growth. 
Uh, okay, from that. So, but uh, what happens is the re the repeat rates take care of that. Uh, uh, okay, if that customer is uh, coming back back and back again, and that accompanied along with the money which he is paying, he pays the five thousand rupees to become a black card customer. Takes care of any of these things. I think the strength of our program is to get him come again and again and get repeated because the cost of acquiring the customer is far higher than the cost of 5% points. Sure. And, uh, you know, again, in one of the opening remarks, you alluded to personal shopper. Now, you know, at one point of time, we had around 600, 700 personal shoppers. It came down to 300 and now again, you are expanding the personal shopper program. And that will help the black card consumers also, uh, you know, from uh, then. Again, that's an added cost. Right. When you're talking of premiumization journey, all these things help to do that. Be it personal shopper, be it black. Uh, do you think at this point of time, in a five percent margin business, uh, you first get it up to eight nine percent and then invest here? Because uh, you know you're closing down stores. Uh, pretty much sixty five percent of the stores was renewed till last year, and again we are seeing some four five percent uh, attrition in the store itself. And along with that, we are investing for uh, you know personalization and uh, premiumization. Do you think the middle level consumers are uh, you know going off the platform? So, uh, I'll get my sense is that the number which we had always was around 280 to 300. In fact, whatever eng engagements and discussions I have with uh, the team here, we all of us know that this has been one of the reasons for customers to come and shop with us. But we were never be we were never aggressive on this, right? So strategically, when we are trying to say that we are going to drive the business to experiences and to optimization, this becomes a very very important uh, uh, phenomenon. So the idea is that, that from the 300 which we had, we have moved to around 400 odd in Q1. We'll take up take this up to 500. The ATV which the, when the customer comes and shops through a personal shopper is actually 3x the ATV of a normal uh, uh, buying. So actually the program is structured, the personal shopper program is structured in such a way that it pays back for the cost, whatever. And, and it's a highly incentive driven. So the cost of a personal shopper is not in terms of only, you know, the base cost. The more he sells, the more he gets back. So I think that's that's the that's the important thing. And these things are very very differentiated. So I think earlier during the call, we were asked that why is it a EBO different from a from a departmental store? I think personal shoppers these things define that experience, which makes us different from a from a from a EBO of a certain store. And we'll continue to build on this. Sure. Um, that's it for my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ankit. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question. On the behalf of Shoppers Stop Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.